The world's quickest nitrous oxide street tire drag bike is being revamped to go even quicker after tremendous success in Richard Gadsden and Brad Mummer hold the coveted market. An unbelievable 640, 221 miles an hour for the quickest nitrous street tire bike. And look at this, we've got packages, full spectrum power, and Electron sending goodies to the garage of Brad Mummer in York, Pennsylvania. Stay with us in this video. We're gonna tell you all about the changes. We're gonna let you know everything that's new on this popular and iconic Old school Suzuki GS. And speaking of old school, Brad's even got a stock 1980 Suzuki GS. He hopes to make a tow bike. We've got that and a big surprise at the end. Stay with us. You are taking a look at the Marvel, the always popular world's quickest street tire nitrous bike that of course belongs to the one and only Brad Mummer. How you doing, Brad? Hi, Jack. How you doing, man? I'm doing great because anytime I get around your motorcycle, I get awfully excited. This is amazing based off the Suzuki GS. Uh, as I can see here, we've got a lot going on. What's new for this year when we do get back racing? Uh, well, the original plan was not a whole lot was going to be new for this year until we started pulling the bike apart after the Man Cup race, the Valdosta race, and we found that the 40-year-old mild steel chassis had finally had enough of going... 640s and 650s and 1060 foots and we had tweaked uh, some of the back half the pivot shaft area was was slightly skewed so we got uh, got it down on the jig down to mike schultz uh, down hdfr and straightened the back of the chassis back out and we put some more bracing in back there and hopefully we got the chassis straightened out that's amazing how bent was it um uh, it was bent enough that we think that might have been causing some of the issues where Richard's been complaining about the bike not wanting to go straight. And, ah, uh, there might have been something to <laughs> might that, have been huh? Something to it, you know. It's, it, I, I got to learn to trust that kid more. He saved me a motor once or twice, and now the chassis. We were our ah, Richard to chew, but now nah, I think it was the chassis. And uh, just from extreme horsepower, it, this thing yeah, finally I, twisted you know, up. You know, it's when you look at it, there's not a whole lot of of anything back here. And then uh, as much as we cut out and replaced, all this was, when we originally did it, all the, the webbing was cut out and done with Molly plate. But we have to chop the chassis on the backside here for chain clearance and some things like that. So it ends up getting really sketchy. Um, so we ended up putting some bracing back in, tied some things together, and uh, hopefully we'll be good for this season. Excellent. We'll have to keep closer tabs on it and listen to Richard starts pitching again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he'll be happier with the, yeah. the new chassis. So last year, 640, yep. 221. That yep. is the quickest nitrous street tire bike, almost the quickest GS, almost coming at Eric McKinney's Willie bar record. Yep. Yep. What is the goal this year or when we get going again? Well, I mean, uh, the rules changed. They're going to try and uh, even the playing field a little bit. Uh, we have historically had some of the, the best, well, we do got the quickest 60 foots, uh, 338 mile numbers out there. So they took an inch and a half of wheelbase from us. We're gonna be at 73 and a half at 600 pounds this year. What my goal and Richard's goal and Mike's goal is that we go out and be in the same position we were last year, which would be one of the top four or five bikes out there. Uh, whatever that number happens to be, we wanna be one of those guys. Um, I think with the changes, we should still be able to run low 50s. Um, but if you asked me last year if we would have ran a 40, I would have told you that no way in hell. 
So God, who knows? Who know? knows, who right? Who knows, yeah. We've seemed to learn something every time it goes out, so you never know. All right, now we got to let people in on the big news you just shocked me with. We look at this <laughs> big, massive bottle. You think these guys are spraying enough nitrous? You think 640 is fast enough? Well, guess what, Brad? Break it to me here. Uh, we're going to put a third stage on the bike this year. Third stage third of nitrous. Third stage of spray. Wow. Uh, we know the DME guys aren't sitting down there not doing anything. We know Williford's down there making horsepower, and those guys already have plenty. So some of it was around, um, we would like to get a little more horsepower on the bike. Uh, and some of the other reasons would be that we can clean up some of the areas that were a little sketchy last year. If you look at the video, when it went from one stage to the second kit last year, a lot of passes, it was mixing cylinders up and wasn't real clean. So we're thinking with three stages, we can smooth some of those transitions out. At least that's our plan, see if it works. I can't wait to see it. You're going to be uh, using a lot of nitrous, that's for sure. I hope you got a yeah. good refill system. <laughs> yeah, we'll be good. Now, hey, we, Marion's always there. He's got a lot of bottles of nitrous. He'll keep us hooked up. Got to love the FBR shop. Now, we caught you on a good day. It was like Christmas over here yeah, early. Yeah, I saw you yeah. opening boxes left yeah. and right. Do we Jason, have Jason, uh, Jason sent us our battery back. He did a quick winter refresh on the battery. Don't ask me exactly what all he does to that stuff, but uh, and that is full spectrum, full spectrum power. Yeah. Jason Levitt and Ben Knight with that company, as you can see. And we got the battery and that's actually over here. through Energy Coil. I think Val's going to be the guy that does the uh, the power sport piece of that. But yeah, it's a this battery was a collaboration between Energy Coil and uh, Full Spectrum. Uh, so yeah, we sent it back to Jason to get a couple things done to it this winter. Again, last year when we put that on the bike, it was. It was an improvement in consistency and data. Um, so it definitely was worth the, the effort to put it on the bike. I imagine it takes a powerful battery for this motorcycle, right? Uh, yeah, uh, that's what we've come to find out that um, after talking to those two guys, when they were looking at our data and seeing some things going on with battery voltages, and then they started explaining it to me about all the, the current draws on this and now this year it's going to be legal where we can run total loss. So the bike will run total loss this year as opposed to charging a battery. Uh, so explain that to somebody who may not know. Why was that in the rules and why can you now run total loss? Uh, it was in the rules because when the class started, it was supposed to be street bikes. Uh, we actually did the street bike ride. We did 25 mile loops and they checked the charging and all that. And that just kind of carried on through as the class evolved, they kept the charging system in, same as keeping the headlight, tail light. Um, which for most guys in the boosts, that's absolutely not a problem. On the GSs, uh, and I'm the only guy that affects really, is you got all this weight hanging on the end of the crankshaft. So at one point in time, a buddy of mine, Anthony Consorti, did a, an outboard charging system that we ran, uh, worked really good. But again, it was cumbersome more weight. So we modified a GSXR 1000 system to fit in this and uh, it worked. Uh, it never charged, at no point in time did it ever charge my 16 volt batteries though. <laughs> we had another little 12 volt battery on the bike it was charging just to be legal. But the bigger issue for us was it continued the crankshafts up. Uh, either the stator would come apart or the weight on the crank so it was an expensive deal where we were chewing up one or two crankshafts oh, a year. And that's about $5,000 a pop. $5,000 when they're the Vance and Hines deals. Now, Eddie can rebuild them at some level if we catch them early, but uh, there was a couple we didn't catch early enough. Ouch. Yeah. So last year, Jason asked what rule changes are out there that would make sense. I lobbied for the no charging system. If you want to run one, great. The boosts, it's not a problem. And most of the guys, I think, basically came back and said, yeah, it makes no sense. We don't run cooling systems anymore. We run alcohol. No reason to have a charging system if you don't, don't really need it. Pandora's box has been opened. Just let that, <laughs> let that box open up, right? Yeah. Hey, we're so past, you know, uh, street bike stuff anymore. This is... That's why a lot of people will ask me on my videos, hey, that's not a street bike. What do no. you mean? Can... It's got a street tire. Street tire. So, yeah. I mean, for for me, the class, the pro street bikes now are like, you look at the radial versus the roll cars. 
those things have all started off where it was a lot of, uh, you know, full chassis cars and steel bodies and th things like that. Now it's really turned into a pro mods with radial tires. And I really believe at some levels that's what this class has turned into. And speaking of street tires, are you excited about this new Drag Max? I am very excited. We were one of the fortunate guys that got to test one at Valdosta last fall and were very impressed. We got to run more air pressure in it than we were running with the, with the Michelin and still have 60 foot times. What we didn't have time to do was really play around and find out what it could take and work on our 60 foots. It was only 60 foots of Valdosta were like 108, 109. Uh, we're usually a touch better than that. So I think some of it was just our chassis set up and getting, getting used to the tire. Uh, but yeah, so far so good, I can't complain. Love it. And I, I also see that you got a box from our friend Kevin down at Electron. What's going Kevin, on here? Well, we sent the throttle bodies down uh, when we were talking about putting a third stage of nitrous on. A couple different ways of doing it. And Kevin's going to make us another set of rings with another um, another inlet for the nitrous. So we'll run both uh, the two stages of nitrous through the bells and a stage through a fogger in the head. Are you worried with the third stage that this could potentially be harder on parts? Just because we have three stages on doesn't mean we have to run any more nitrous than we had before. Okay. Um, we just change the jetting accordingly. It's all, if we do it and, you know, this is a trial, we can go test and find out, boy, this doesn't work and easy peasy, we just unhook one side and, you know, run two solenoids and go back to what we were doing. But the thought process is to try and get it as smooth as possible. Um, it's all about power management. I mean, the class is, we all make plenty of horsepower. In our case, we have to make all of our time to the eighth mile mark. So as smooth as we can get it there, uh, the quicker we should be able to go. And one of the thoughts is three stages, uh, we should be able to manage the power a little better without going from one kit to a bigger kit. We can equalize them a little more and go up through. Well, I can't wait to see this thing back on the track once again. Before we go, I see you got your Harley posters behind you. Yep, yep. I got to say congratulations <laughs> because you are officially retired. I How have, many years at Harley-Davidson? I worked 40 years at the Harley-Davidson assembly plant here in York. Uh, That's amazing. Proudly worked there. I mean, they've been very, very good to me for 40 years. I got all this. The house I'm in, the cars I drive are all because of Harley. So I... I'm happy to work there. They treated me really good for a long time. Uh, but yeah, 40 years was enough. 64 years old and 40 years at Harley. It's, it's time to go away. And now you get to have <laughs> some more fun here, yeah. hopefully. Well, limited schedule this year. Uh, now that I'm on a fixed income, I got to be a little more careful about what I spend on the bike. Well, you know, we got a lot of people who love this bike out there, so I think we can help find you some support <laughs> and some sponsorship. And that is, I mean, I told you I was standing in the pits of Santa Pod in England, and a guy came up to me and said, oh, I love the Gadsden Mummut bike. It's unbelievable. With this thing being so popular, I mean, what what does that mean to you guys when you see the oh, views off the charts? And it's, it, it's, you know, very flattering. It's, uh, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to wrap your head around at times when... Uh, like we went to Valdosta and the, the amount of t-shirts we sold at Valdosta, you know, it's a different crowd than the XDA group. So they don't normally see us. When we go to XDA, everybody knows us. Uh, when we went down there, it was like 60, 70 t-shirts we sold or the ones I send out overseas. Every time we, we listed, we got a new batch in. I know I send 20, 30 t-shirts overseas. It just, it, it's amazing to me, uh, the following the bike has, uh, you know, and. It's an honor, and I really appreciate it. It's it's special. Well, I think it's mainly because it sparks up so much nostalgia and reminds people of this awesome machine over here. Yes, you do have a Harley, for those okay. wondering how does Brad not have a Harley, but he also has a 1980 GS 1100E, is that it? Yeah. 1100E, right before, was that right before the 1150? Yeah, they ran, uh, Come out with the 1150s, I believe in 84. And, and you got the same paint scheme over here. People yep. just absolutely love it. So 
There you go. We're going to have to, on Cycle Drag, we'll start a campaign with all these fine <laughs> sponsors you have. You have so many of them from Vance and Hines to Webcam to JE to Worldwide, to Marcus Worldwide. McBain, Unit 5, AP, Electron, Air Airtime. Breaks. Uh, Brock. Brock's, BST. of course. Brock's, BST, uh, Brad and Yeah. Any, pretty Full much, spectrum. we give people a call. They are, they're willing to, to step up and give us a hand. Energy Coil, my boy Val Dick, for sure. Uh, yeah. All of his products. A multitude of boxes up there that we're going to have on the bike this year to try and even go quicker or get more consistent. Well, I got news for you, Brad. This is like the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want, but this bike's too popular. We got to keep it out there. We'll do I, what it takes, man. We'll, we'll do our best to get a handful of races this year. We, I told Richard, I said, well, if everything plays out right, we plan to be at the July race at MIR. Uh, I like going to Virginia, so if that, if that happens in August, and then go back down to the battle uh, in September. So the last three races at XDA. Okay. Would probably would be what we do if everything plays out right any plans to test or everything just up in the air right now well the other big piece for this year is for the first time it, it's funny i'm finally going to retire from work and all this crap but for about two years now i've been trying to piece together a spare motor uh, i've had most of the parts and one thing this thing would eat the the primary bike would eat a crankshaft so i'd steal the crankshaft from that one or we'd heard a tranny Anyhow, I finally got all the parts together to put together a spare motor, uh, which is actually going to be our good motor. Uh, we made a couple changes to it here and there. We've done a couple things with the transmission. We've done a couple things all through it that we hope makes it a little quicker than this one. Um, well, I guess we'll find out. So the plan would be to get Richard up here. We'll get on the dyno spin spend some quality dyno time with it and then uh, i'd like to get somewhere and test uh, probably go south try to get down around darlington where we can get mr locklear on site with us uh, airtime airtime the legend get, get him close uh, it's always it's a rare occurrence when we get him to actually be on site with us so if we can get down to darlington johnny will be hands-on help us get squared away and then uh, head to the xda event that, Can't wait. that's kind of where we're at well, I can't wait to watch this thing put some jaws on the ground again. And again, congratulations on a great career at Harley-Davidson. Anything else you'd like to add here before we go? Uh, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Awesome, Brad. I think we're good. There you go. Thanks okay, so thanks, much. Thanks for stopping the house again, Jack. You're always welcome. You know I'll come here anytime. Maybe <laughs> even more than you want. <laughs> you, if there's an excuse to come look at this yeah. bike, I'm there. Well, you can do that. Awesome, man. Can't wait to see you back at the track. Okay, right, man. Thanks. Let's check out Richard in action once more. We also have a big surprise coming at the end. A barn find, we will call it. One of Brad's early motorcycles. Six forty nine two fifteen. Another impressive pass. So, a couple questions in the comments. Number one, how much do you love this bike? And number two, how quick and fast will these guys go moving forward? A third stage of nitrous. Can you believe it? Well, we promised you a surprise at the end. Let's head out to Brad's secret barn for a blast from the past. Wait till you get a load of this. Make sure if you know anyone who'd be interested in this, tag, share, share the love. GS fans will absolutely adore this video. A motorcycle enthusiasts dream of barn finds. Well, we found a barn. We're here with the one and only Brad Mummert in Pennsylvania. And Brad, do we have anything, do we have any buried treasure? What? Well, what did we find? <laughs> what is it? Well, the, the rumor has always been that the race bike we have now is the same bike that we ran back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Piece now, of history. It's buried, it's buried in my shed. Oh, no. 
Oh and my one of these goodness. Days we'll put a motor back in it and go put around. That is a piece of history. One of the coolest barn finds I've ever seen. Yeah, that bike set the record, I think, in 2001 on a 775 at like 190. So, yeah, pretty funny. Very. Any chance we ever put a motor back in this thing? I got uh, a bunch of stock stuff up in the attic. And, you know, but yeah, at some point in time, now that I'm retired, the plan was that we're going to put a motor in this and put around on it. And Godzuki is not in this good of shape. That's Phil and Tommy's over 1150. It was also in my attic in a bunch of pieces. I got a bare frame air and a fairing. And the intent would be at some point in time, start putting them back together. Wow. Best memory involving this motorcycle is what? <laughs> uh, Ken Stott still tells a story to this day. Uh, when we set the record down in Houston, that Tommy and, and Kent left side by side and Tommy started to pull away from him and Kent claims it was the only nitrous biker ever out top end his turbo bike back then. Uh, Tommy went 75, like 190 and Kent said it was just steady pulling away from him on the big end. He still gives me shit about it. <laughs> but yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty cool weekend. Wow. And what year was this drag bike built? <clears throat> Actually, Mike, I, this bike I rode, I rode in the first shootout event in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, what back, year was that? Oh, uh, shit. What year was that? 98? 98. Wow. 98. Uh, maybe 97. Not good on the dates. But the first year we ran in Bowling Green, Kentucky, I rode the bike. It was strutted. It didn't look like this. It was a stock paint job. I rode it those two years, and then the next year, I think we went to Indy, and I rode it there, and then uh, at some point in time, Big Phil convinced me I needed to put shocks on it, so Mike Schultz that built the silver bike, built this bike also, and did the suspension and everything on this, way more primitive than what we're running today. It didn't work nearly as well as what we've got today. Uh, but yeah, so then Michael Phillips started riding it. I rode it part of the season. And I think we were in Columbus, Ohio, and Phil introduced me to Mike, and he rode the bike. And one lap on it, he went faster than I ever did, and that was the end of it. I was uh, an extremely average rider, and when you get somebody like that kind of talent, you just let them go with it. And I had a ton of fun. Racing with those guys was a hoot. Well, a piece of history. Thank yep. you so much for showing yep. us. This is definitely the coolest <laughs> barn find I've ever found. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Schnitz uh, Racing Street, Fastest Street Bike Shootout. That was the, the logo back in the day. Big shout out to Dave Schnitz. He was yep. always a big supporter of these yep. bikes. Yep. Wow. He got us going back in the day. So, yeah. We've Good come one. a little ways, haven't we? Way. <laughs> What was yeah. the best DT on this bike? 775. 775. And you've now brought that down to a 640. 40. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. A lot of different technology from then. This was a big motor. 1425 was like, you know, a big motor back then. That was the way to go. Um, now that thing in there is a 1655. And, you know, you can make them 1850s and uh, full kill tranny as opposed to an automatic. It was way different technology. Very Way cool. Thank you for the trip down memory yeah. lane. Piece of history. If you have any comments, <laughs> if you know anything about this, guys, share it down below. A trip down memory lane indeed. I really hope everybody enjoyed this update. We want to thank Brad Mummert and Suzuki fans. How cool is this? This is one of the most popular motorcycles out there, not just in the pro street class, but overall. And it all started with that original creation right there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope we provided you with a little bit of entertainment. That's always what we aim to do. We love motorcycles. You love motorcycles. Let's keep this thing growing. Check it out, guys. Up here on the wall, 100,000 subscribers. I love it. Thank you so much. It's all because of you. We appreciate it. Please come with any story ideas. We love the comments and the feedback. I read every single one of them. The positivity is always appreciated. And you haters out there, I love you too because you keep me on my toes. Thank you for watching no matter what. Guys, to keep this thing growing, please subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Hit the bell for notifications. Share with some friends who like drag racing. 
like motorcycles. This is how we can keep this thing going. And also like cycledrag.com on Facebook. And we'll keep rolling. We'll keep finding those stories. We'll keep finding those impressive, high-performance motorcycles that you want to see. Thank you guys so much. Truly appreciate it. You know, if there's anything fast motorcycles involved, we are in. Cycle drag. Rolls on. Such a special motorcycle. Could Mummer and Gadsden be headed for the 630s? And also, we want to thank all the great sponsors out there that keep this bike going. Hey, sponsors, I got a special message for you. Brad thinks he may be winding down because he retired from Harley. No way. Let's keep giving him the support he needs so him and Richard can be out there for years to come. It's such a special bike in the pro street category. Thanks so much, everybody, for subscribing to Cycle Drag on YouTube, liking CycleDrag.com on Facebook. If you're locked in, we'll bring you more Brad Mummert Suzuki GS videos in the future. And you know, if there's anything fast motorcycle involved, especially the world's quickest street tire nitrous bike, we're in. Cycle Drag rolls on.